Sex is as free as the sunshine. You come a long way, baby. And we say to society, this is a new lifestyle. We shack up. And when we have a falling out, we just shack out. <laughs> This is my answer. You do not have to agree with me. You are free to defer with me. But you cannot say that I am wrong until you can tell me what is the right answer. That's fair, isn't it? That's fair, isn't it? Come on, answer me. You cannot say that I am wrong until you can tell me what is right. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, <coughs> that the last people to come out of Dajjal or the Antichrist will be women. The last people to come out of the jail of the Antichrist will be woman. And a man would have to return to his home and tie down his wife and sister and daughter to protect and preserve them from the jail of the Antichrist. Indicating that when the jail's mission is close to its climax. Something strange is going to sweep the world of women. That they are going to be deceived, utterly deceived. That what would appear to them to be the road to progress, which they will eagerly grasp and embrace, what would appear to them to be a revolution in the world of women, the likes of which mankind never witnessed before, would in fact be the child's deception. I believe you will share with me the view that that prophecy of the blessed prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam is today being unfolded in the modern feminist revolution and its so-called struggle for women's liberation. Allah created the male and the female the way he created the night and the day. He says that in the Quran. And then having said that, he said, In nasa'ayakum lashadda You are functionally different. But in Akhirul Zaman, they say that's nonsense. The Quran is nonsense. Anything a man does, a woman can do. And so the night can try to become day. It's called the feminist revolution. But in the process of the night trying to become day, she's pursuing her own career. Oh, very good, mashallah, mashallah. She's pursuing her own career. Nobody ever said you don't have any brains. Of course you have brains. Our mothers have brains. Sometimes more than our father. Nobody ever said that you don't have brains. But she's pursuing her career. And now she's going to work in the morning, facing the morning traffic like everybody. And coming home in the evening, facing the evening traffic and everybody. And then you have to buy, you know, the pre-cooked food. Yeah. And uh, the children, we'll put them in a daycare center, put them with the next door neighbor and so on. But because she is pursuing a 
a career in which the night is trying to become day, something happens. She loses her femininity and in she even loses her fertility. She cannot have children. So she has to go to a fertility clinic and pay lots of dollars to try to become pregnant. Are you going to be angry with Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam? Then kindly part company from us. Because what this hadith indicates is that women who fall under the influence of the child. Not all will do that. No, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, we have sisters in Islam who cannot be seduced by the child, who will not give up the hijab, not for anything. What this hadith indicates is that women who come under the influence of the Dajjal are going to be brainwashed. Brainwashed. <laughs> Meaning, you could talk as much as you want. You will not be able to convince them. It's an exercise in futility. Because they are brainwashed. Talking to them and warning them is like throwing water on the back of a duck. It'll just flow off. Hmm? Brainwashed. They will lose the capacity for rational thinking. And become like robots in the hands of the child. And this is why you have to coercively restrain them, tie them down to protect your sister, your daughter, your wife, who is now trapped by the job. We see that this is the explanation, this hadith, this is the explanation of a modern Western feminist revolution, which is taking the world by storm for the last hundred years and more. We say that Dajjal is the mastermind of the modern Western feminist revolution. You may differ with us because you are brainwashed. So your differences with us makes no difference to us because you are incapable of rational understanding when Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam has spoken in the way that he has spoken. That all through history, every civilization has recognized a functional difference between the male and the female. That men have functions in society and women have functions in society. And that they have been biologically constructed and physiologically constructed in order to fulfill their basic functions. Along comes modern Western civilization and says, no, wrong. Everything a man does, a woman must have the freedom to do it. And so, women now assuming the functional role of men in society. And when they do so, they dress like men. Is this happening by accident? She's dressed in a jacket. She's dressed in trousers. And she has a tie. What's going on? Why does she not dress like a woman? Why is she dressed like a man? And now she's working full time. So what happened to the babies? Now you got to follow the American Sunnah, one son and one daughter, hmm? two children. And uh, you can't work full time unless you have a slave at home. So she takes care of the house. 
What's his name? If she is paid a wage, which is a true wage, then she won't be a slave. But if she if she is paid a wage which your woman will not work for, then she is a slave. So I ask you, is there any Singaporean woman who will work in Singapore from early morning to late at night, day after day for the whole month, without any vocations? for the wage that you pay the Singaporean maid? No. So then why Singapore? Why are you so shamelessly enslaving my daughter? As a maid, as a servant. She's the first awake in the morning, Singapore. She's the last to sleep at night, Singapore. And my daughter works as a slave. She has no vocation, Singapore. And all that you study in Harvard about the free and fair market. Singapore, you took it and threw it into the garbage bin. Shame on you, Singapore. You make an agreement with Indonesia to pay her $300 a month. Shame on you, shame on you, shame on you, Singapore. Would any Singaporean woman work for $300 a month or $500 a month? None, none, none. But my daughter has to be a slave. That's riba. Therefore, she's a slave. So the price of this modern feminist revolution is that you must have slaves at home so they can work and take over from you so you'll be a part time mother while the slave does the rest this is harsh language not only did that civilization give us the working woman and hence the daycare center the working woman and therefore the daycare center so she's now a part time mother but that civilization also gave us women who are dressed and yet naked. All through history, women were always covered. But now, they are dressed and yet naked. It started with the taking off of the head covering. Oh, now I'm free. I'm free from this bondage, the covering of the head. Okay, let's see where you're going. What they call a baby. Baby. And then the arm is become bare. Oh, you're making progress. And then the skirt starts coming up and reaches up to the knee. Oh, you're making progress and you're proud of your new freedom. And then she starts to become even more provocative in her dress. Allah has created her beautiful for men. And as she takes off her clothing, the provocation for men increases. <coughs> Is this happening by accident? It starts over there and then like a virus it spreads to the rest of the world. The revolution in dress because she is dressed and yet naked, obviously has a sexual repercussion. And it leads to a sexual revolution. Where the barriers which were built 
by society concerning the sexual bond are now dismantled. And eventually, sex is as free as the sunshine. You come a long way, baby. Sex is now as free as the sunshine. Well then, the implication would be universal zina. People eventually won't bother about getting married. Marriage is for the birds. Yeah, we the young ones, we live a different way. We, sh we shack up. <laughs> A boy and a girl decide, we want to live together, we shack up. And we say to society, this is a new lifestyle. We shack up. And when we have a falling out, we just shack out. <laughs> and this zina becomes now commonplace and acceptable. So in a similar way, what used to be considered to be detestable zina now becomes commonplace and acceptable. Is this happening by accident? If it is not, then we ask what is the explanation for it? We have an explanation in Islamic eschatology. And this is ours. If you differ, then please tell me what is yours. Nabi Muhammad wasalam, explained to us the sexual revolution. It's not just zina. <laughs> no. Eventually, you reach saturation point in the number of women you can have and then it no longer excites you so then you turn to something else because now men will dress like women yes if a man is to dress like a woman, the first thing he has to do, whether you like it or you don't, whether you approve of what I say or you don't, the first thing he has to do is to shave off his beard. It doesn't matter to them that it was Allah put the beard on their face. No! You made a mistake. I'm taking it off. Because the modern world considers the clean shaven face to be one of progress. And the beard represents backwardness. So the first step on the road, if men are to dress like women, is to shave off the beard. Why would a man want to dress like a woman? Answer, so that he can attract another man. And so the sexual revolution eventually must spawn, spawn homosexuality and lesbianism inevitable and that is already occurring in the world today but that's not all eventually you have to search beyond homosexuality and lesbianism to get your your high Nothing else is working now, and I'm in search of that high, to become high. So then you turn to children. 
and there is sufficient in the world today to tell you that it is spreading the sexual exploitation of children. Is that the end of the road for the sexual revolution? No. You still have animals left behind. You still have animals. Thumma radadnahum asfal as Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam gave us the explanation for this phenomenon, the sexual revolution. And he said to us that this was Dajjal sexual revolution. If you have another answer in your university, in the Department of Gender Affairs, come on and give it to us. We are waiting for it. The Department of Gender Affairs of your ministries or of your universities. Hmm? Ours is, this is the job. In other words, the job will be brainwashing women and they will be so mesmerized, so hypnotized by the job, so totally captivated that they will lose the capacity to think properly. But do you know that Britain, the island of Britain, initiated and led the feminist revolution? I present all of this information to you to argue the case that the island in the Hadith of Tamim Dari is the island of Britain. And so my answer is that that island of Tamim Dari is Britain. <laughs>